Well, morning, morning, or morning. good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon or good evening to everyone who's listening now. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm excited for today. Me too. I feel, I feel much better and ready to talk. Yesterday I was feeling a bit dead. Yeah. Yeah. So yesterday we planned on uh, recording this episode, but Gemma was man down in bed. I I don't usually get man down, but I I had I had the tummy bug, and I could not move and I could not get out of bed. So I feel a bit more human today, which is exciting. Um, I felt hungover, actually. I felt oh. like I I couldn't move. I my body was aching. I couldn't think properly. I just felt dead to the world. And there is nothing more frustrating when you can't when you can't function. And it exactly. reminded me so. And I. It reminded me so much of being hungover, especially those like really bad hangovers that kind of take. Don't you away. miss it? Because today, today I feel like it's day. Like I feel a bit more human, but there's still I still have that like slight tenderness where I'm like not quite fully myself. Yeah, it's the um, second day hangover. Exactly. Um, yeah. Which is, I think, a very good segue into today's topic. Why Melissa and I have chosen the sober route. So. Today we're talking about um, a pretty unpopular opinion, sobriety, so it might be a bit triggering. I know that when I was drinking a lot, any sort of posts or anything I saw about moms don't need to drink or you don't need to drink, I used to get so yeah. upset. I was like, oh, you don't know me. Of course I need to drink. You don't know my life. Exactly. Um, uh -huh. I'm like, you don't need to drink. <laughs> um, <laughs> So anyone who knows us or knew us before uh, and knew us together knows yeah. that we used to drink. Um, we used to drink seriously. We put a lot of time and energy into getting into getting drunk. We were drinking for the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, I know. Melissa was like, we. Uh, our aim was to get as drunk as we could. Why did you say Melissa? <laughs> Well, because you said the other you said the other day you were like, no eating, eating is cheating. Like we used to. Yeah, that's basically the mentality that I had. Because if you eat, you're not going to get as wasted. Yeah, and that was our goal was to get as poop drunk. I don't know what that yeah. translates to as absolutely poop poop drunk poop drunk <laughs> as we possibly could. We dedicated a lot of time and energy into our drinking, um, but today mm. we're both. We're both sober, Melissa, for a bit more than me. I think what you are nearly three years. Uh, in drinking. May, yeah, in May, I will be three years. And today is actually my 14 months of not drinking. Mm. Um, yeah, it's funny how that worked out. Um, so we're going to just talk a little bit about how we got to this point. Um, yeah. How, how we went from wanting to be as drunk as we possibly could be to wanting to not drink <laughs> <laughs> wanting to be as sober, as sober as we possibly could be exactly would you like to tell me when you started drinking so how old were you when you when you touched your first drink how old were you when you got drunk for the first time I was I was such a goody two shoes I was such a scaredy cat when I was little I was really I don't know how my parent, my mom or my parents somehow put the fear of God in me that I just, I was so scared to be bad and make a bad choice. And it was the first New Year's that I was allowed out. And I went mm. out with friends of my friend mm. and we went down to the beach, Santos, Santos, and um, we didn't have any drinks with us. I think I was 15. Okay. I hadn't even started my period yet. And, um, <laughs> and what? yeah, and we were on the beach and somehow ended up sitting with these bunch of guys and they were giving us slate suppies or I don't know, again, what you would call that in English. Ciders. Um, the ciders, mm. not even ciders. Like it's basically like cool drink, cool drink. It was like brutal fruit. Yes. Brutal fruit. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And, um, 
And so we were sitting in a circle on the beach and I was so scared because my friends were now all drinking and I was so, mm. sc- they were a year older than me. I was petrified, totally out of my comfort zone, no phones. So True. I started digging a hole in the sand behind me and I was just pouring the drinks into the, into the sand, <laughs> into the hole because I was so scared of getting drunk. Yeah. Um, and the guys were like, wow, you're drinking really fast. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And um, I stayed, so I'm I so think, cool. I'm so cool. I think I stayed sober that whole night, but that was the first, my first like experience around people, my first social drinking experience, and I was petrified. Um, mm. And then it, it got easier after that, where I stopped throwing it in the sand and just started throwing it down my throat. <laughs> um, and then grade, grade 10, we went on a hockey tour and made some bad choices and we ended up back at a house that we were staying at and my friends made this like energade lucasade with like vodka and mm. got absolutely i just have zero recollection i just remember feeling <laughs> very weird yeah and um the hockey game the next day was also not great and then yeah matric Last year of school was, I felt like I knew what I was doing by that point. So it was a lot easier to drink. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, everyone around you was probably doing the same thing as well. So then it becomes Uh, easier. Yeah. We could get it so easily. It wasn't, I don't Mm. remember it being so difficult to get. I remember going to, like going to the Decca, which was this place where you would go in Langara, Mm. which is a South African type of dance. And we would we they were like great tens there like 15 16 17 year olds and you could buy a bottle of wine you could buy santa anna all the saints oh my word yeah you could buy santa anna and no no one questioned us no one stopped us it was ridiculous Um, i feel like it was definitely more controlled where i lived because we we had to wangle our way into places yeah but i'll get to that when, so when we went on that hockey tour, it was in Durbanville. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And it was a lot more difficult to acquire it there. And we were like, this yeah. is so weird. Why won't they give us alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> we, look, we look 18. Exactly. <laughs> what about you? Um, I definitely was not scared to start. I started quite early. And if I think back on it now... I feel like I just want to grab myself by the neck because I was 14. Yeah. uh, Yeah. 14. When I started like experimenting, but I um, befriended Michelle, who, you know, and (laughs) this, this, (laughs) this friend of mine, she, she, she's quite naughty until today. She's quite naughty. And the two of us together were very naughty. So, we wanted to, you know, start drinking. I started smoking, obviously only socially. I mean, it's not like I whipped out my cigarettes at home. Um, but my point is very early in my high school, high school career, I started drinking. So I would say halfway through grade eight is when we started like, you know, going out uh, during the weekends and we would try and find find house parties or any place that we can go to where you can have drinks and then by the time I was 15 it was like that is what you do like you don't do anything else weekends are for drinking mm-hmm. um there used to be a lot of house parties when I was young like a lot and that's usually where we went uh, went to when we wanted to drink. And then the other place that we went to was the dam. So, <laughs> and we would drink constantly. And I mean, it's been like that ever since mm. until I stopped. It's, it's when you think back to how old you were and what you were doing and what you know mm. now, I cringe. Mm. I'm just like, I cringe and I get so scared for my kids. Yeah, but that's the thing is I, I'm not even looking at, I'm not looking at it from the health aspect at all. Not I'm even. looking at, that's no, thing. exactly. I'm thinking of it just safety, you know, because 
when you drink and you drink so much, and especially for young girls, I mean, any kid, but for young girls to be drinking the way that we did. Um, and to be so vulnerable and to your brain yeah. only is finished developing at the age of 25. And by the time we were yeah. 25, we'd already done such stupid shit. Yeah. Um, I, I, I cringe. Uh, the fact that we got out of all of that, out of that phase, unscathed, mm. relatively unscathed, is oh. a miracle. A miracle. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> I, I keep thinking about this. I mean, I'm even thinking about, like, in my early 20s, I went to Thailand and I lived there for a year. And the shit that we did there, and I mean, you drink in Thailand. You drink a lot. And booze is very, very cheap. But there's also such a dark underworld in Thailand. Mm. And I don't know how we came out of there alive. I don't know because we were so reckless. We were completely reckless. I was very reckless in school as well. I was very reckless after school when we met. Um, and we were just thinking that we are having the best time. But if I look back at it now and I think about all the shit that we did and how we risked our lives... So Literally. we did, we did. Yeah. And you think you're invincible. You think you're like untouchable, yeah. like nothing can happen to me. Yeah, exactly. I think most people who still drink now think that, I mean, even if I, uh, where I used to live in Malta, they don't stop you for drunk driving. They don't. I mean, if they do, they would, they would probably have like a roadblock on new year's Eve, just because, you know, that's the right thing to do yeah. on new year's Eve. But yeah. The majority of people that I know would drink and they would drive. So they think I they drive. are invincible. Yeah, even me. I, I drove drunk. Um, like, yeah. I'm incredibly ashamed of it, but I did. And it's, yeah, it's, I know a lot of people that did. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when we, I think when we were in our early 20s, um, the law in South Africa became stricter. So mm -hmm. there was basically like zero tolerance. So I think in our early 20s, I don't know how it was in Mossel Bay. I think in Mossel oh, Bay, it was like that as well. Wasn't it? I have no idea because I just drove. Like, oh, okay. I, was so close to, I was like, I know, I know the back roads. I know the back roads. <laughs> yeah, see, but it was different with us because we wanted to drive from our town into the city. So obviously yeah, in the city, different. they will stop you. In South Africa, public transport is you, there isn't public transport really no so no. you can't take a bus you can't take a train taxis are expensive and also sometimes risky and dangerous and we didn't have uber back then so it mm -mm. was you didn't really have much option and that meant mm -mm. someone had to not drink and good luck finding someone who wasn't going to drink yeah. when everyone was going out Exactly. Uh, I mean, listen, I think sobriety is only like starting to trend now because if you think about 10 years back and before that, no one was sober. No one. Not a, not a chance. Not a chance. No. So what was, what was it like for you after school and sort of the stage between, yeah, be, being out of school and sort of having your first kid what was that stage like for you drinking wise okay so in my early 20s I was drinking a lot like a lot a lot and then um like I mentioned I went to Thailand drank a lot there came back and then I went to Europe to go and work on the super yachts and I think anyone that has worked on super yachts would know that you cannot be sober when working in that um, environment. It basically revolves around drinking and not just drinking, getting absolutely wasted because now you are also rolling with the big guns, you know? So when, when um, the boat docks, you are in a very fancy area. You go out, you go club, you go to like the most expensive places for dinner and you just chug down wine after wine after wine. So for a good two years of my life, we were doing that as well. And then we moved to Malta and um, we, we kind of mellowed a bit, but I mean, it was still very much part of our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and then uh, after I had the twins, 
um, I was drinking. I, I was drinking after having them. Um, but then when they were around eight months old, I, d I don't know what exactly went off in my head, but I was just like, I don't want to live like this anymore. I really don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to, for me, the reason why I decided to quit alcohol wasn't, um, you know, necessarily just about health. Health was a bonus, but for me, it was my mental health because my mental health was absolutely suffering. Like the anxiety that I used to get after drinking was crippling. I would I would not want to face anyone and I would not want to face the day. I would literally feel so low and so depressed, which is obvious. I mean, because you are on a come down, like you can't just be up all of the time. You're going to come down at some point. Um, but my come downs were very, very bad. Sometimes I look at other people and I'm like, how can you actually like keep doing this and not feel that downer? Because the downer to me, I would get a downer after one glass of wine. Um, just because it made me feel so unbalanced. And then, you know, you know, I don't know if you know that feeling where you would maybe go for lunch or for brunch with friends and you have a few drinks and then you come back home and you just feel, oh, like it was so nice while I was there, but now it feels like, oh, like I just don't feel good. Now I used to feel like that all the time and more, even after just one glass of wine. So I, um, I really wanted to stop, but I didn't know how to stop. I, um, I mean, it's, it sounds so stupid because it's yeah. like, you know, like you just stop, but no, it's not as simple as that. And I really felt like I needed to have a mind shift. Like I needed to hear certain words to completely rewire the way that I think. Um, and then I ended up downloading this audio book, which I've never done. I've never listened to audio books before, but this audio book was of Alan Carr. Um, the easy way. Yeah. Easy yeah. way to quit drinking or something. He's got like a whole series. Yeah. 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 But it wasn't yeah. to quit. It was to control your drinking. Uh, and, and in the book, they basically say like, that is, um, it's almost like clickbait. Like, obviously yeah. we're not going to, we're not going to tell you to control it. We want you to stop. But I would not have clicked on that and listened to it if they told me that I'm that I need to quit. I just wanted to rewire my brain as to how I have fun in life and not right. just doing that. And then after I listened to that book, I was like, "Screw that! I'm never drinking again." <laughs> so it was very effective. Well, there you go. You controlled it pretty well. Exactly. And <laughs> how? How was it with you after you quit school? Because obviously that's when we met. And I, I do know, obviously, we drank a lot back then. So between like your 20s up until 14 months ago, what went on? Um, a lot of wine, a lot of wine, a lot of drinking. Like I drank a lot and mm. I drank with all my friends. Um yeah there was always wine and particularly 2015 and 16 when i moved in with my best friend i was teaching <laughs> and Ooh. oops we would let's in our previous episode we were talking about how i we didn't make dinner we didn't cook for mm. two years and it was because we just drank we would just mm -hmm. drink wine and I would mark papers and I would like plan lessons and do assignments and then drink and then go and teach the next day. I mean, I, again, I'm not proud and I cringe, Yeah, but I was it functioned. I mean, I was 27 mm -hmm. ish, something, something like that, 26, 27. Um, and then m moved here to Switzerland and my husband, boyfriend at the time, we, we drank a lot of wine in the evenings. I would, it was very easy for me to finish a bottle of wine. Like I would make dinner and drink a glass and a half too. And then he would come home and then we would finish the bottle. And it got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm not drinking on Monday. I won't drink in the week. Mm. And just saying that to myself to, to get through the week without drinking wine was really hard. And that mm. thought scared me. Like, why is it? I also was smoking at the time. And I was like, why is it so hard to not drink wine in the week? 
and sometimes I would get to Thursday and I was also again now teaching at this point I was teaching three to four year olds so I felt like I really needed that glass of wine when I got home and yeah I I did I managed to stop for a month three months or something like that before our wedding because I was like on a losing weight mission yeah and so I stopped drinking for the month because I had a goal in mind but the whole time I was like oh I really want to drink and I can't wait till this is over until I can drink so that was my mentality and then after the kids were and same when I was pregnant I was like oh I just want to drink but I can't and I won't and yeah. then after they were born after I stopped breastfeeding I slowly started drinking again and I started drinking more and more and more and the December of 21 again winter here is really dark and depressing and hard mm -hmm. and I just I was drinking a lot of wine and it, it was absolute crutch an absolute like drowning sorrows drowning feelings of depression feelings of resentment feelings of anger feelings of so much that was still pretty rife from being pregnant during COVID and small babies mm. and I would wake up at like three four o'clock from mm. like the wine wakes and I felt like shit and I just couldn't go back to sleep and I was like okay I'm not gonna drink I'm not gonna drink today I'm not gonna drink tonight and then I felt like just dizzy and not dizzy but just not there the whole day like my brain just fuzzy like there was a veil mm -hmm. the whole time mm. and then five o'clock rolls around and you're like I feel okay I can have a glass of wine I feel fine and that pattern went on for a while um and then the January came and I was like okay I need to stop this now we need a month of like sobriety and again that month I was like I cannot wait until I can drink again until this month is over first of February woohoo back to back to that mm -hmm. and that first of February I went out for a friend's birthday and the waiter was just you don't even look they just keep pouring wine in your glass it's never empty you just like never empty and the next morning I woke up to exercise and I just sat on the couch like a zombie and after a month of feeling like great and not drinking I couldn't believe how I had broken that in one night and how completely shit I felt mm. like that and then I sort of because I'd had that month of not drinking it was a bit easier to not drink at home and I managed to carry on with not drinking at home and then I spoke to a friend who again our friendship in our 20s was founded on drinking and she mm. said that she'd stopped and I was blown away I said uh what are you okay and she told me a book that she'd read which was the this naked mind mm. I forget the author and so I also got the audiobook and all the signs were pointing in that direction that it should stop but I was too scared to stop I didn't want to um and so that year was kind of like my I see they call it sober curious where mm. you dabble in sobriety it became easy to not drink at home and I managed to stop drinking at home which was great but then the scary thing was now what do I do in a social situation mm. because there's always champagne there's always the brunch there's always the wine how how do I be <laughs> how do I be and how do I say no mm. And that was the hardest part. I definitely I think that that is the, the hardest part overall, because if I think about why I drank for so many years, the reason was because of social situations, because of trying to enjoy myself more when in social situations. See, I, I didn't even drink alone like you did some nights or drink during the week. For me, it was like 1000% uh, a way of kind of mellowing out while I am with people mm. and um, I don't know almost thinking that I would be more fun as a person yeah where 
I completely changed my mind after listening to that Alan Carr book. So this naked mind that you are talking about, apparently this woman based a lot of her principles mm. on that book and, um, which a lot of them do. I mean, there's other people as well who have written like sobriety books and a lot of them go back to like the teachings of this guy. Um, because I think he's dead by now, yeah. but my, my point is, um, for me, it was definitely how I was going to handle it in social, social situations. And to be honest with you, in the beginning, I was like, I was, um, embarrassed about it and I lied about it. So I remember the first time we had to go out and I had to, um, I had to say, I'm not drinking. So I, I think we went to a friend's house and we had a barbecue and then obviously like we take our own drinks and you take your drinks out and you drink. Um, and they asked me, what can we pour you? And I'm like, no, just get, uh, I brought some sparkling water. And obviously hearing Melissa say she's only drinking sparkling water. They immediately said like, huh? And I'm like, yeah, I am on medication right now. So I can't drink. <laughs> so that's what I said, because I felt, I felt like, I don't want to be questioned. I don't want to tell them why I'm not drinking. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to, you know, stick to this. So I just didn't want to say to anyone why I'm not drinking. And then I realized like it's that first month. That mm. first month was fucking hard. It was really hard. But then after a while, I was like, I'm freaking proud. Like I'm proud that I can say no. And one of the things that they basically said in the book is that most people drink so that they can relax and they can have conversations with people. And so you drink that because you want more confidence, but at the end of the day, it's literally making your name ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's making your, like you, you are basically just like ruining your reputation and people are not going to want to talk to you because you are not making any sense. It's so ironic. It's like in that window where you say you're lying, it's because you're still trying to grapple and understand what you're doing and you're trying to make sense of it. So you don't have the capacity to explain it to other people because you don't understand it for yourself. So that totally makes sense. And I think a lot of people feel that because it's so, it's so big to go yeah. from not drinking to, to go from drinking to not drinking. Yeah that you have to understand for yourself what it means for you before exactly. you explain it to others. I, I hate saying that I'm going to do something mm -hmm. and then I can't stick to it. And I also, it kind of irritates me when other people do that. And I know it shouldn't irritate me, but it does because I feel like they flip flopping, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so I wanted to make sure that, you know, this is something that I'm serious about and I'm going to stick to this and, this is my new life, you know? So that's why I was like, I'm on medication because <laughs> just leave me alone. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in your twenties, doesn't matter if you're on antibiotics. You're still exactly. Oh my, I, I can remember when I was 16, I told you the other day about that accident I had in the December holidays where I stepped into a rusty yes. nail yes. and I was on antibiotics and I saw it as yeah, I'm going to get even more drunk. <laughs> <laughs> even quicker, cheaper. Yeah, exactly. Because back then we didn't have money. So if that no. one drink is going to make me more drunk while on antibiotics, what a freaking score. <laughs> so, yeah, but I, I, I definitely feel like um, the first month of sobriety is is the hardest. And obviously like most things that you adapt in your life, like if you make any lifestyle changes, I think it takes, um, I think it's two weeks to at least, um, kind of change your habits and then four weeks to stick to the new habit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's why the first month I found to be really hard. But then I think what, when you start reaping the benefits and you can start mm. seeing like, Oh wow, not just am I feeling good physically, but mentally, like for me, the mental part that went with it, yeah. I was like, it, it, it caused, it caused me anxiety to think about having to drink again and to feel that like heavy mental load. And that's mm. why I was like, uh, uh, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. The, when I, when I finally decided to stop, we, that, so that year I was sort of 
drinking a little bit, but they're not drinking, drinking. And I found that when I did drink, I was then so concerned about, okay, I've had one drink. I can have one more, but I can't have more than that. But obviously mm -hmm. the nature of alcohol is that it, my favorite saying from the book is first the drinker takes a drink, then the drink takes a drink and then the drink takes you. And yeah. so by that third one, you kind of don't really have any control anymore. And it's not your fault. It's the alcohol. That's what the alcohol does. Yeah. And so when I was sort of monitoring it, it was so stressful. And so the whole, everything I was doing was not enjoyable anymore mm. because I was so focused on, I've had one. Okay. Okay. Two more, two more. That's it. That's it. No more. Okay. Okay. One more. Oh no, I've had too much. I need to stop. Whereas when I finally stopped, I just didn't have to think about it. And it was exactly. just so much easier because you don't, it's like when you see a bowl of chips in front of you and you know, if you take one, then that's tickets. It's, you know, then you're going to have more. Yeah. If you have anything once, it's so much easier to go and have more. Yeah. Um, but it was that January we were in South Africa and my husband and I went away for a few nights and we shared a bottle of champagne and away from the kids like we don't have to wake up in the middle of the night mm. and I woke up at three o'clock after having had the champagne and I was like fuck this I'm done because mm. I, I want to sleep I feel terrible when I don't sleep I, I've, I don't feel like a human I'm horrible I'm cranky I feel terrible I have anxiety I'm thinking about thing I mean I already have all these crazy intrusive thoughts on my own I don't need alcohol to help me with them exactly um so I just decided then and there to just stop and because I'd had that sort of year of not really drinking a little bit drinking it was so much easier and this time instead of previously when I was thinking oh I can't wait to have a drink I can't wait to have a drink now I was like oh I don't I don't have to drink like I don't mm -hmm. have to um and social situations were so much easier because I had decided I was done. Mm -hmm. I was like, now I get to just be silly by myself. I get to be myself because everyone else is getting drunk. So they're yes. losing, they're not completely aware. Mm -hmm. I'm completely aware and mm -hmm. I can just be as stupid as I want to. Exactly. And exactly. It, it's, it's, it's so freeing because you can be yourself. And everyone's so con everyone's so worried about like like you just said you know having the confidence to engage in a conversation, mm. but half the time the people are drunk, and uh, their conversations are shit. Yeah, I I, I would think what I, I would never remember conversations like I would meet people uh, months later and they're like oh I remember meeting you at this party and I'm like eh, sorry I don't remember meeting you ever. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I still have that problem and that's just me, but yeah. Um, and so at this one party I went to, I, I didn't drink and I was running around and dancing. And the next day, someone I met, um, she said to me on Instagram, she's like, I would never have known that you were drinking. She had no idea because I was running around like everyone else was. Yeah. Um, and I felt great the next day. And like my friends who didn't. <laughs> that, and, I think that is the feeling that puts me on a high is the fact that you can do all of that but you can still wake up the next day and feel great. Like, yeah, that's, it's, it's such a nice feeling. It's oh, like, what are you willing to sacrifice? So there are, t now that I've done a year, I often have these thoughts of, should I just have another glass? Of, should I just have a glass of champagne or should I just have one drink? I, so I've, I keep having these thoughts and then I go back to that saying, and I go back to, you, you know, you just can't have, you can't just have one. And it's not my fault. It's the alcohol. It's that's what it does to everyone. And I don't want to feel like that. I don't like feeling out of control like that anymore. I don't like making choices when it's not fully me. Like, mm -hmm. I know that that version of myself, I, I don't need, I don't need that version of myself. And, and it's the, that's the past you, you know, like, why do you want to go back to that? It's like you said, it's not, it's not going to change. It's not going to change. No. Alcohol doesn't change. It's going to yeah. stay like that. So you might think it's like, it's like people who are on antidepressants and they start feeling good. And then they think to themselves, oh, I'm good now. I'm going to yeah. drop the medication, which 
I mean, I think 90% of people on antidepressants do that. And then once they're off it, they're like, oh shit, I'm feeling shit again. <laughs> same, <laughs> you know, but it's true. Yeah. So the same thing goes for like, if you've been sober for a very long time and you go back to drinking, I mean, how many alcoholics have that problem? You, you slip right back into it because it's the alcohol. The alcohol is going to have the same effect on you exactly. and you are going to feel the same after having that second or third drink. And I can tell you one thing, this is something that my eyes opened up to is that no one drinks not to want to feel a buzz. Oh, for you, sure. you, you are not drinking because you are like, oh, this wine is exquisite. Like you are basically just a freaking uh, poser. You are drinking because you want to get a buzz. And when you get to that second or third drink, you are not going to want to stop. You are not going to want to. And if you do stop, you are probably going to battle in your mind like you just said. And it's exactly. going to be it's going to be awful because you have to just constantly be like, oh, I shouldn't drink now. Maybe I should wait like 30 minutes, have a bottle of water first. Because from, from not drinking to that first drink, that buzz that you get from that first drink is what you keep chasing for the rest of the night or the rest of yeah. whatever you're drinking. And I remember when I would go out and I, I would just keep drinking because I couldn't feel, I, I didn't feel drunk enough and I was just trying to meet that first buzz mm -hmm. and that's what it does. And so I know that there's no point. And another thing that was in the book and that I think about is I, I like my friends and I want to be around my friends. Why do I need to numb myself or create this to create this uh, this haze when i i i like the people i'm with you should be able to enjoy the people mm. you're with and the space you're in mm. without being drunk because you know if you can't have fun with your friends without drinking then there are other questions that you should be asking yourself exactly or if you can't have fun just by being on your own because a lot exactly. of people would like get to know yourself, you know, like, why do you have to literally like numb yourself out? So for sure. But I will say there is, it's like you said, the first drink, there is something nice about being tipsy. Let's face it. That's why people drink. I sometimes even think back, like I was walking in Lisbon the other day and I was like, Oh, that's a nice drinking spot. Oh, that's a nice drinking spot. And then I think in my head, like, it was nice when I was younger and we were going to these places and you basically hop from the ne from the one place to the next and you go for drinks. There is something nice about it, but that period of time is very short compared to when you just cross that line and you get drunk and then the after effects of it. Mm -hmm. So when I have to weigh those things out, then I'm like, mm, it's not worth it. But that's the thing. What are you what are you willing to sacrifice? So yeah. of course we're not stupid. We we remember and we know that that first buzz that's the catch. That's what hooks you. Yeah. Um, and when it hooks you, then it's got you. Yeah. So, for sure. Do you do you have any um, health benefits um, that you have noticed after after quitting? So oh, for do you feel a difference? Totally, totally. I have more energy. I don't wake up um, mm. in the middle of the night for no reason. I don't just wake up randomly and then struggle to go back to sleep, which that has been a huge, I mean, that was, that was my main, main reason. Mm. Um, I have more energy. I don't have anxiety. I don't have the hangovers that completely cripple me and make me feel like shit. I don't have that like hazy feeling. My skin is better. Mm. Um but like eating wise it doesn't make you want to eat like shit the next day um i just yeah i feel more alive which yeah i think is pretty exactly pretty good reason I, exactly that's a good way of of saying it because you do feel <laughs> you do feel more alive you don't feel yeah. so freaking oh um yeah. i I immediately noticed, obviously, like there was a massive um, mental shift for me. So I just started feeling happier. Um, mm -hmm. And I I felt like a sense of pride because I, I couldn't believe that I was actually like doing this. So I really like I felt proud of myself. But um, 
if I think of like, you know, physical um, changes, my skin was really, really, really inflamed. And I never, never knew that it was because of alcohol. Because the thing is, I drank once a week. I drank on a Saturday and then it would have been like, you know, three, four glasses of wine and that's it. But it shows me how inflamed my gut was because of the alcohol that I was consuming, because everything started showing in my face. My, my cheeks were so incredibly inflamed. I used to have, um, I don't know if you know what keratosis pilaris is. So mm -hmm. keratosis pilaris is basically like where your arms become super inflamed at the back as well. So you would have like red on your arms with lots of um, bumps. Like ouchies. super, super, no, it's not ouchy at all, but <laughs> <It's good stuck. laughs> exactly. It looks shit. Um, but I, that was also inflammation that my body had. Um, and all of those things went away. And then a massive, massive change was water retention mm -hmm. because I retained so much water when I was drinking alcohol that I was always like a little bit puffy and I couldn't get that away. Like, even if you try and eat as good as you possibly can, you're not going to get rid of that if you continue to drink alcohol. So the the health benefits was amazing. And I, I, I noticed that probably like within the first or second month after quitting. And then obviously it just gets better and better after that. Yeah. If I look at pictures of myself from when I was still drinking, my skin was, my skin was really bad. And mm. that's been it. And I was also smoking at the same time. So those two things combined. When I stopped drinking, I also stopped smoking. And I mean, huge, huge, massive change. Massive yeah, yeah, change. yeah. Um, so you were still you were still smoking fourteen months ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, naughty. Yeah. Well, I didn't start when I was like ten. How old were you when you started? Smoking? I was not ten. <laughs> I only started smoking. I only started smoking because of all you bitches that were more I know. <laughs> more mature than me. And I only started smoking when I was 21. So I was a bit behind. <laughs> oh my word, I was 14. I remember <laughs> I I started smoking Peter Stuyvesant Blue because oh. when because when I was young, so I was 7, Bon Jovi came to South Africa. And, and back then, like the cigarette companies could still sponsor like the, yeah. the tour and it was Bon Jovi sponsored by Peter Stuyvesant Peter Blue. Stuyvesant. So I was like, yeah. And I was like, I'm smoking Peter Stuyvesant. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I, I quit when I, when I had Savannah, I quit like completely. Then I stopped and then I dabbled with smoking a bit like in 2018 and then after that, I was like, oh man, I'm just feeling too shit. Because if you have to smoke and drink, like oh, you, no. I, I definitely think that your hangovers are even worse when you oh, smoke while sure. you're drinking. hundred percent, hundred percent. And another thing I also wanted to say was drinking with kids is also something oh. that I started to struggle with. I remember my birthday when we moved into our house and we had like a picnic barbecue outside and I got pretty drunk and the kids were just, it was just, they were almost one and a half. And I remember I was drunk and my, luckily my mom was here and she put them to bed and stuff, but not being in control around the kids mm. and them seeing mm. me, luckily they were still very young, but there were lots of other kids here and the kids seeing me like that mm. scared me as well mm. and I don't want them to see me getting that way and I don't want them to see that and think that it's okay because I know what I did when I was a kid teenager mm. and I want them to I want them to know the realities of it and I don't want them to be so naive like I was. We we were actually talking about this the other day on our voice notes. And um, basically, we were talking about like, you know, drinking and how we grew up and, you know, why we've made this decision and whatnot. And um, I grew up with parents drinking, but they were not drinking excessively. They were drinking, 
you know, like normal people would drink, they would enjoy their wine. They would, my dad would like have a beer after cutting the grass. It was nothing like major, but alcohol yeah. was in our household. So, um, I don't feel like we ever had the chat about, you know, you shouldn't drink or why you shouldn't drink or why alcohol is bad. And, um, it was basically just like, you cannot drink until you're 18, you know, because that's mm -hmm. when people start drinking. And, um, because of, you know, what I went through in my teenage years and my twenties and my early thirties, I also just got to a point where I said to myself, I don't want my kids to drink the way that we did when we were younger. You know, I, I know, like we said earlier, a lot of things could have happened to us. I mean, thank goodness we are okay, but a lot of things could happen. And I've got two daughters, you've got one, and I'm especially worried about, you know, the girls. And, um, I, I started talking to Savannah about drinking and alcohol since I think last year, because she would see, so, so my husband would drink, um, non-alcoholic beers, but then she also knows that like other people outside of our household, they drink beers or wine or whatever. And she started like becoming curious because she, she has asked like, Hey, what is that? And then we would be like, it's something that grown ups drink. We, we used to say that when she was younger mm -hmm. and then after a while, she, she, she said, I think she once said to her teacher, my daddy likes drinking beer. And back then Daniel didn't drink alcohol anymore. He drank non-alcoholic beers. So I wanted to sit her down and explain to her like, you know, okay, so this is non-alcoholic beer. They, there's something inside of it usually that contains alcohol. This one doesn't have alcohol. This one is alcohol free, but the alcohol is the one that makes you feel a little funny and, um, it's not a good kind of funny and it makes you, um, make bad choices. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, and she understood it like that. And I have just decided like from here on out, I am going to be open and honest with her about these things. I mean, obviously still trying to keep her innocence as much as I can, but I do want to be open and honest about, um, you know, alcohol and the effects that it can have and why it's a wise choice to not do it or to drink mm -hmm. it. Um, because I do think that that's important and it's important that you have these conversations with them because, um, I don't know if I would have done anything differently if my parents had that conversation with me. Um, but I do think that it helps if there is absolutely no alcohol in the household, you know, because then they don't think that it's the norm. And then it's also, there's also that when there's something that you don't have, you're curious and you want to know about it. So I understand yeah. that part of the discussion as well. I grew up in a house where there wasn't a lot of, my parents didn't really drink. I don't remember them drinking. I remember my uncles drinking. And as I got older, when we would uh, have um, gatherings or Christmas or whatever, mm. I remember the rest of the family drinking, but my parents, not so much. Mm. Um, as I got older, there was more alcohol around. Um, so uh, yeah, for me growing up, there wasn't, it wasn't like they didn't, but I don't remember it was, my dad's not a big drinker. Mm. Um, so yeah, we, I'm, I sort of come from the background of there wasn't a lot of it, but it, we did get to try it out. So did um, you have conversations though? Like, did your parents have conversations about it? I don't remember. I don't, I don't think there was ever a conversation that was around alcohol and what it does and explaining what it, what it is and how it works and how people drink it and why people drink it. So mm -hmm. I don't remember, remember that, but I do think it's a good idea what you're doing, um, explaining it because when my kids get to that age, I definitely want to as well because mm -hmm. my husband still drinks. He definitely drinks less now that I don't drink anymore. Yeah. You kind of do spur each other on as well in a relationship. Yeah. It's definitely inspired him, but he, he does still drink. And I know that he won't stop completely. Yeah. And so we're in the position where I don't drink and they do. And I will drink the non-alcoholic alcoholic beers or I'll pour something into a wine glass to make myself feel fancy. Yeah. It's also about, it's also about the ritual and the routine. Mm. Um, but I, I want that. Yeah. I want them to understand Look how silly your father's being and look how controlled your mother is. <laughs> um, That's a good way to go about it. 
<laughs> choices, it's not so great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, listen, I understand that. I, I mean, I know of kids who were younger and then they, you know, like you always want to kind of try out something that you were not allowed to do. Like for me, for instance, like for instance, it was like that with me when it came to food. So I grew up very, very healthy. And then I went to college and I was like, I'm going to eat like Subway, but like a fake Subway from the spa. So I also wanted to kind of rebel against it. Yes. Exactly. Um, but I feel like just to kind of like clear my conscience, I want to at least try and go this route and see if it, you know, if it helps. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you, I mean, you can't control them forever and they no. will make their own choices and that's up to them. But as long as you've, you know, done your part and like you say, clear your conscience then. Yeah. I don't want to have any part in it. I don't want to feel like I ever gave them. You don't want to you know, inspire them. Really. no exactly exactly I, anyway i really loved chatting today and i feel like this is probably a subject we can carry on talking about for for hours and hours but i think we'll cut it here and, if you're inspired let us know <laughs> yes if you're inspired to be sober not to be drinking and if, and if you're triggered don't let us know <laughs> Um, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, if you would like to see the video version of our podcast, you can go to The Big Art Fun on YouTube and the audio version is available on Spotify. Thank you for joining. See you, see you next week. Bye. 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 <laughs>